okay so welcome back to the next class of complex analysis in the previous class we started very important concept called residue and if a function has a simple pole then we find the residue of that function if z at z0 can be represented as limit z tends to z0 z minus z0 f of z that that was the recipe of that that was the recipe of that that we know now we extend this and try to consider what happened if the function has singularity of order n or order k so if the function has a singularity of order k then this function f z has to be represented in this particular form z minus z0 to the power of k plus a minus k plus 1 z minus z0 k minus 1 plus a minus 1 z minus z0 this is analytic part principal part and the analytic part is a a1 z minus z0 plus a2 z minus z0 square and so on so this expansion is valid when when the function has a singularity uh, at z equal to 0 and the pole is of order k. So, that is the pole of order k. So, now the question is uh, how to uh, deal with uh, these things, how to deal with these things, how to find out my goal here is to find out, find out this quantity a 0 somehow. So, the very thing first thing that we can do that we multiply z minus z0 to the power k to both the side. If I do z minus z0 to the power k we multiply with the fz then the first term will be a minus k in the right hand side, second term will be z minus z0 a minus k plus 1 plus 1 I have a minus 1 multiplied by z minus z 0 to the power k minus 1 and plus a 0 z minus z 0 to the power k plus a 1 z minus z 0 k plus 1 and so on. I just multiply in the previous case I multiplied z minus z 0. In this case if I have a pole of order k I just multiply z minus z 0 multi to the power k to the entire function and the expansion of the function should be something like this. Once I have the expansion of the function then still this quantity is sitting here which I need to find out. So, what we will do? I need to reduce these things. So, in, in order to reduce these things, best way to derive the left hand side to make a derivative of left hand side with respect to z up to k minus 1 time. So, that all these things will gone. So, that is k minus 1, z k minus 1, right hand side is z minus z 0 to the power k f of z. Once I make a derivative with k time all this term will go away only term that is here should be k minus 1 factorial a minus k. So, every time when I make a derivative this power will come and for that k minus 1 factorial term will be there. Then I will have one term analytic part I will have a 0 and again this k minus 1 k into k k into k minus 1 and all these terms. So, here 
So, I will have factorial k here divided by factorial 1 z minus z 0 to the power z minus z 0 and so on. The right hand side I will have this term. Now, what is the next thing? Because I already have this term in my hand. Now, if I put the limit at z 10 to z 0, so all the analytic part will go away. If I do, so let me do it here. So, I will do that. So, limit z tends to z 0, this quantity k plus 1, k minus 1, d z k minus 1, z minus z 0 function of z, if I do, then in the right hand side, I only have one term which is k minus 1 factorial a minus 1. From that, I can now extract a minus 1. So, a minus 1 which is my residue is now extracted for a function which has. So, a minus 1 will be how much? a minus 1 will be how much? 1 divided by k minus 1 factorial limit z tends to z 0 d k minus 1, this is my recipe. This is my recipe to find out what is my a minus 1. One, once I know the function has a singularity at z equal to z point with pole of order k. So, I have two formula in my hand and if I write these two formula side by side, this formula will be something like this. So, let me write it here. So, residue f z is something limit z tends to z 0, z minus z 0 f z, this is one recipe when we have a simple pole residue f z is 1 divided by k minus 1 factorial d k minus 1 d z k minus 1 z minus z 0 to the power of k f z. This is my recipe 2. Two recipes in my hand. So, I am going to use to find out the residue. So, now go directly go to the problem. So, let us start with few simple problem and then we will try to understand how these things are working. So, first example, example 1, fz is equal to 1 divided by z minus 1 whole square z minus 3. Suppose this is the thing. I need to figure out the residue at z equal to minus 3. So, how many first how many singularities are there? Singularities. So, first I need to find out singularities. 1 is z is equal to 1 that is the first singularity pole of order 2. So, here this singularity is not a simple singularity, it has a pole of order 2. However, second singularity is at z is equal to 3 point at z equal to 3, but it is a simple pole. The formula suggests that if it is simple for pole, the formula is quite straightforward and simple. So, let us try to find out first the residue at 3 and mathematically it should be written as residue of the given function f z at 3. What is the recipe? I will multiply, I will take the limit at z tends to 3, multiply the function z minus 3 
the function here is 1 divided by z minus 1 square z minus 3 I will do that and it will cut here and here and now I put the limit to the function it will be 1 divided by 3 minus 1 whole square so I will find 1 by 4. So my residue at 3 is comes out to be 1 by 4 what about the other residue because other residue is at z equal to 1 but having a square term associated with that that means it is a not a simple pole so I need to use the second recipe this one. So again residue of fz at point 1 is how much I need to take the limit z tends to 1 and then take a derivative first order derivative because since k is equal to 2 1 divided by 2 minus 1 it is 1 factorial so this term is 1 so here I will put 1 so I that is why I did not put anything but it will be the first order derivative because the derivative of order should be k minus 1 if the singularity has the pole of order k so here pole is 2 so that means I need to do the derivative one less than that so first order derivative so which quantity I need to derivate derive z minus 1 multiplied by the function function is this function is this so now this quantity will cancel out that is why we multiply that and then I need to make this limit limit z tends to 1 and then derivative of this quantity derivative of this quantity is 1 divided by z minus 3 square once I make 1 divided by this thing so minus 1 term will somewhere come here because of this derivative so I will have this so now I will put z the value of z here so here minus of 1 divided by value of z here is 1 minus 3 square which is minus of 1 by 4. So first case my residue was 1 by 4 in the second case the residue comes out to be minus 1 by 4 ok. This is the first example and blindly I am using these things so I am getting some results. So let us do a similar kind of problem few problems so that you are familiar with uh, whatever the residue you are getting. So next problem is again quite straightforward so example 2 the function is given as let me check once again yeah 5 z square minus 4 z plus 3 the numerator and the denominator the function f z by the way it is this and it is z plus 1 z plus 2 and z plus 3 ok this problem looks uh, very straightforward because whatever the value are given in the numerator all have a simple pole once we have a simple pole the problem is very very simple since there is no derivative is required and all these things so let us do that thing and try to find out so this is sort of some sort of exercise and it is a good exercise so let us try to find out residue of this function fz at one point. So where the residue mind it at minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So residue at minus 1 first I try to find out. So my formula suggests it is z tends to minus 1. I multiply the entire stuff with z minus 1 multiplied by f z square minus 4 z plus 3 divided by z minus z plus sorry z plus 1 here I need to multiply because my residue at minus 1 so z minus minus 1 so z plus 1 z plus 2 and z plus 3 
z minus 1, z plus 1, z plus 1 will cancel out. Then I need to just evaluate this function at z equal to minus 1, that is what. So, 5 multiplied by minus 1 square minus 4 multiplied by minus 1, then plus 3 divided by minus 1 plus 2 minus 1 plus 3 this quantity. Next, it is just 5, it seems to be plus 4 plus 3. In the downstairs, I have 2 minus 1, so it is 1, 3 minus 1, it is 2, so I have 2. So, upstairs, it is 5 plus 4, it is 9 plus 3, 12 divided by 2, so I will have a value 6. So, my first residue at z equal to minus i, minus 1 is 6. Okay. Let me find out the other residue quickly. Let me find out the other res residue quickly. So, residue at residue function of z at minus 2, which is limit z tends to minus 2. Once I multiply z minus 2, so z minus 2, z minus 2 will cancel out. I am not doing that part. I am just directly writing after removing z plus 2 term which is obvious. So, I just need to evaluate this quantity that is all. I need to evaluate this quantity at z equal to minus 2. z plus 2, z plus 2 will cancel out because I multiply z plus 2 and z plus 2 is already there in the downstairs. So, now this 5 minus 2 square minus 4 minus 2 plus 3 I have this if I evaluate this quantity at minus 2. So, now it is minus 2 plus 1 minus 2 plus 3. So, here I have 5 into 4 so 20 plus 8 plus 3 divided by minus 2 plus 1. So, minus 1 is here and then 3 plus 3 minus 2. So, that means 1 is here. So, I have minus 1 here 1 minus multiplied by minus 1. So, it will be seems to be uh, how much 30 minus 31 8 3 11 and then 20 is minus 31 minus 31 is the value of the residue at function z equal to 2 one is left. So, this is just a lengthy problem, but straightforward. You do not need to do the uh, derivative of that. Okay. So, residue finally, I have to calculate the residue of f z at minus 3 point. So, again it will be just the limit z tends to minus 3 minus z plus 3, z plus 3 will cancel out. So, I have 5 function whatever the function is given 5 z square plus 4 z plus 3 divided by z plus 1 and z plus 2. This two term is in my hand and then I put the limit directly. If I put the limit directly then I have 5 minus 3 square minus 4 minus 3 plus 3 divided by minus 3 plus 1 minus 3 plus 2. So, it is uh, 3 9, so 45 minus 12 plus 3 divided by this quantity is minus 1, this quantity is minus 2, minus 2 multiplied by minus 1, so we have 2. So, 45 plus these things uh, it is plus, so 3 into so it seems to be 45 uh, 5 so, it is 60 by 2, 
seems to be so i will have 30 so the residue of this quantity at z equal to 3 is z equal to minus 3 is 30 okay so we have few straightforward thing so now i have another uh, kind of residue and this residue is uh, something so let me check is there any other problem uh, okay let me do once again one example before going to that so function of z say e to the power of z divided by z cube this is one function so now one I, I can do one thing that so far we are blindly using this residue structure so for this particular problem we will check because residue is nothing but the coefficient of the lorer series the coefficient of 1 by z minus z0 in the lorer series so if i evaluate this as a lorer series then i can have the value of the residue so let me do that so if i expand this as a lorer series around z equal to 0 around this point in some uh, limit with uh, z less than 1 or something then it will be z cube and e to the power z is 1 plus z plus z square plus factorial by factorial 2 z cube by factorial 3 and so on mind it singularity is at around z equal to 0 so this function e to the power z is a entire function so there is no singularity of this we have a singularity of z here at 0 point so this is the point where we have a singularity so i am excluding this point i am trying to find out how the expansion is so excluding this point is the entire part the function is analytic the function is analytic except except the point z equal to 0 so i am expanding these things in this region if i expand this will look like this and then i have few terms z cube plus 1 by z square plus 1 by 2 z factorial 2 z rather then 1 by factorial 3 then z by factorial 4 and so on so now you can see that this is a series where we have the principal part and the analytic part so this is my principal part pp 1 by z0 1 by z minus z0 if i write it in this way at around z equal to z0 the way so it is z minus 0 cube plus 1 divided by z minus 0 square plus 1 divided by factorial 2 z minus 0 and so on and this is the analytic part ap so in the principal part this is the term which is interesting for us because this is the term where we have a coefficient of z minus z0 that means the coefficient is 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 should be my residue so this is the coefficient this is eventually a minus 1 1 by 2 so without doing without blindly putting this formula by just expanding i can also find out the residue and here in this case the residue of this function residue of function z at 0 point comes out to be half comes out to be half right now if i try to blindly put this formula this formula should be here it is written so it has a pole at z equal to 0 and the order of pole is 3 so now i am going to use the formula and check whether both the cases i am getting the same result or not so residue using the formula the residue of function z at 0 
it comes out to be something like limit z tends to 0 1 divided by 2 minus 1 factorial uh, 3 minus 1 factorial d 2 t z square z uh, z cube and the function e to the power z divided by z cube. So, this is the this is the expression if I blindly write this and try to find out the residue. So, z cube z cube will cancel out if I make a double derivative. So, 1 divided by 3 minus 1 factorial is nothing but 2 then limit z tends to 0 this function if I do e to the power z if I make it derivative second first derivative and second derivative this function will be simply e to the power z. Then if I put the limit then I will have e to the power 0 so e to the power 0 is 1. So, eventually I am having the same residue that I am getting here. So, half here half in the first case I calculate the entire stuff by expanding these things and in the second case I am try to find out the same thing but here I am getting the same result and exploiting the expression exploiting the expression that is written in that side of the board. Both the cases I am getting the same results. So, with this note I would like to conclude here. So, so far we know that how to calculate the residue if the function is given and its function have some finite singularity and uh, this singularity has some order and all these things. But apart from that there are few other functions where this procedure may not be suitable and in that case we need to use something different. And for example, a function f z I am just giving you the functional form maybe next day I will calculate that 1 divided by sin say uh, uh, sin n pi z pi z. So, here we have a singularity at z equal to any integer if you find. So, z equal to 0 we have a singularity z equal to plus minus 1 you have a singularity z equal to plus minus 2 you have a singularity. So, all this singularity are here in this point 0 here 1 2 3 1 2 3 minus 1 2 3 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on. So, the function is analytic in this intermediate region and apart from that this function has an infinite number of singularity. Now, if I try to find out what is the residue of this particular function in any of this uh, singular point then how to figure out. So, that is an interesting problem. So, I will try to do that in the next class because today we do not have much time to do that in the next class we will start from here and then we try to understand why the residue is so important in this particular case that means in uh, in uh, complex analysis. We try to find out why it is so important because it gives me directly the solution of a closed integral even if some some uh, in, uh, some singular point is there I can exclude this singular point and I can find out what is the value of the integration without doing any kind of uh, so called integration just using some formula. So, with that note so let us conclude here see you in the next class what we start where we start the residue once again and try to find out how to calculate this special kind of function and then try to understand what is residue and how the residue is important in calculating integration. So, thank you very much for your attention to so, see you in the next class.